and thanks for watching. I'm Susan Chekalu Signin, Director of Marketing and Program Development for the Friends and Foundation of the Rochester Public Library. FFRPL is the 501c3 charity that raises funds, presents programs, supports special projects, helps to create specialized spaces, and purchases supplemental materials and equipment for the Rochester Public Library. Learn more at ffrpl.org. We are delighted to launch the virtual version of our Fall 2020 Book Sandwiched In series of book reviews. As many of you know, Book Sandwiched In has been running continuously since 1956. We'd like to thank all of our reviewers who are participating remotely this season, and we look forward to welcoming everyone back to the library when it is safe and healthy for staff, reviewers, and the general public. Our fall BSI roster focuses on diversity and inclusion. This presentation will be a review of Disability Visibility, a first-person stories from the 21st century, edited by Alice Wong. Published in the summer of 2020 to coincide with the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, activist Alice Wong's book provides an urgent, galvanizing collection of contemporary essays by disabled people. Our presenter today is Greg Baratan. Before coming to Rochester, Greg served in a dual capacity as both director and director of training for ADAPT Rights Group, one of India's largest disability rights groups in the country. Greg has worked for the Center for Disability Rights New York for four years, serving initially as a policy analyst, then manager of government affairs, and now as director of advocacy and development. The Center for Disability Rights is a disability-led nonprofit that provides services to people with disabilities and to seniors. They promote independence, enable people to choose their living settings, and foster full access to the community. Greg has a Bachelor of Arts in Social Science from Bard College and received both his Master of Arts and his PhD in Policy Studies from the University College London Institute of Education. Hi. My name is Greg Baratan. I'm the Director of Advocacy at the Center for Disability Rights. Uh, I've been asked here to review the book Disability Visibility, uh, First Person Stories from the 21st Century, edited by Alice Wong. Um, a couple notes for transparency's sake here. Uh, Alice is someone I know rather well, though we've never met. We've uh, worked since late 2015 on a project called Crypt the Vote, which was designed to bring disability into the political sphere. Um, and uh, I urge you all to, to check that out on, on Twitter and Facebook. Um, but so I hope my relationship with Alice as, as a collaborator. Uh, we also started the project with Andrew Pulrang. Um, still allows you to accept my thoughts on her, the book she's put together, which I can tell you is, is a wonderful collection. Um, the other thing I'd like to say before I start is that I use identity first language. I refer to myself as a disabled person. I do not use person first language. Um, there's a lot of debate among people what language is appropriate, what language is proper. Um, I understand that person first language came about to assert the humanity of people that had long had their humanity denied. Um, but I have, have come to the place where for me, disability is a, a proud identity that I wear up front and one that I, I feel I'm proud to wear. Uh, I do not feel the need to have anyone assert my humanity for me. And so I use, I, I describe myself as a disabled person. That said, if anyone prefers to be called a person with a disability, I am fine with that. I will respect personal choice. Um, and I ask people to respect mine. Um, now, I say disability is a proud identity for me, but I, I can't say that it always was. Uh, when I grew up, 
disability was something I ran from. Um, even after my diagnoses of multiple disabilities, uh, disability was something that I just couldn't see in myself. Um, largely because the representation of disability when I was growing up was not something that was something very foreign to me. Um, the the primary representations you saw of dis disabled people on TV and, and elsewhere were things like the Jerry Lewis MDA telethon, uh, these horrible fundraising events that were used to, that used pity portrayals of disabled people um, to generate huge amounts of funds and they justified the damage they were doing to the dis disability community by the supposed benefits these funds would create. Well, uh, disabled people spoke up and, and until recently the, the MDA telethon was dead and I personally hope it stays that way, although I understand they plan to revive it. Um, but so I, I struggled to, to identify as disabled for, for a long period of time um, and actively ran from it. Um, and as, but as I got to know people from the disability community, as I discovered that there was a disability community, um, that all changed. Uh, and, and, and finding that community meant everything to me. Um, it, it gave me a connection to the world uh, where before I felt incredibly isolated. Um, it helped me understand myself uh, in ways that I could be proud of. And, uh, and the thing about that is I'm probably one of the people that should have been able to find representation in, in the world because as a cis white straight male, you know, I'm the I'm the one most likely to be depicted, um, but I, I didn't see myself in in any of the depictions I saw uh, as a kid growing up. Um, so I I, I kind of wish I'd had this book. And um, the book Alice has put together with essays from across the disability community uh, is a love letter to that disability community. It showcases the breadth of experience and knowledge of the disability community, highlighting the joy, the love, the excitement, the frustration, and the pain that goes with being disabled in this world. Uh, most of all, it puts on full display the power, the brilliance, and the strength, and, and the breadth of the disability community. Um, and that is is a wonderful thing to see anywhere, and, and it, unfortunately all too rare, so this book fills a need. Um, the book is broken into four sections. Being, which examines the experience of being a disabled person in what is often a hostile world. In stories ranging from Harry McBride Johnson's classic account of her debate with a famous philosopher advocating against her right to exist, to Maysoon Zaid's exploring her coalescing her is Islamic faith and the fasting it requires during Ramadan with her disabled body, which struggled with fasting. And Jeremy Woody's story of being deaf in prison. Um, the second book is Becoming, which looks at how disabled people have chosen to reinterpret and reconstruct that hostile world. It becomes, it begins with a quote uh, from disability community organizer and activist Sandy Ho. Taking up space as a disabled person is always revolutionary. The quote is apt for a section of stories in which disabled people recognizing the ways in which disability is much more a societal construct imposed upon them than it is about the experience of impairment located in their bodies or minds. Uh, in understanding this, it becomes clear that disabled people can and have taken control of that construct to reimagine disability 
in ways that can only be described as revolutionary. Doing is the third section. It explores the things our community has done with those reimagined lives. From Wanda Diaz Merced's path as a disabled astronomer to civil rights lawyer, Brittany Wilson's experiences navigating and fighting to be treated with respect on New York City's paratransit system, to Latif McLeod's look at gaining communication access as a user of augmentative and alternative communication. It is a section that underscores the breadth of work and engagement taking place in the disability community. Um, and there are many more stories in, in each of these sections. Uh, connecting is the final section of the book. It looks at the, the power and support many of us have found in the disability community. As someone whose life has been transformed by the discovery of this community, this section of the book especially resonated with, with me. Uh, the section spotlights the strength and power many of us have derived from the disability community, pointing to the fact that everyone in our society benefits and can learn from this community. Uh, with essays like Patty Byrne's exploration of the lessons we can all take from queer and trans disabled people, and the Harriet Tubman Collective's analysis of how integral an understanding of disability justice is to realizing the full promise and vision of the movement for Black Lives. The section reveals a disability community that is not only protective of its own, but one that makes all of our lives better. I, I wish I'd had a, co a collection like this as a young disabled man, or that my parents had had it as they raised two disabled kids. There's no one that cannot benefit from reading it. All of the essays are accessible reads. To understand some, of, some on a deeper level, readers may have to delve into their own discomforts and understandings of disability a bit more. But to me, that's always a good thing. I think more of us should do that with all the things that make us this uncomfortable. Uh, all and and the essays in this book will will help you get there. Um, I I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, Alice's commitment to accessibility extends beyond the text. Uh, besides making the book available in Braille, large print, and audio versions, she has modeled accessibility for all by commissioning disabled journalist Sarah Luderman to write a plain language version so that everyone can enjoy these texts. Far too often, writing is made inaccessible to people through its complexity and finding plain text ways of, of, of expressing ideas can open up texts like this to everyone. Um, I, I wholly recommend people seek this out. Um, I urge you all to read this book. By some estimates, disabled people make up 25% of our population. Uh, so chances are either you or someone you know is disabled and is a member of the disability community. Not a bad reason to, to understand this community better. And there's no place better to start than this collection. Thank you.